एम डॉक्टर सुधीर चंद्र झा आई हैव पास्ड माय एमबीबीएस फ्रॉम कलकत्ता मेडिकल कॉलेज एमडी फ्रॉम पटना मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड डिप्लोमेट ऑफ नेशनल बोर्ड एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मेडिसिन दरभंगा मेडिकल कॉलेज एट द मोमेंट माय टॉपिक टुडे इज इंटरमीडियंट फास्टिंग इट हैज ड्रॉन ग्लोबल इंटरेस्ट एंड अटेंशन एज ए मीन्स टू रिड्यूस वेट लूजिंग फैट एंड रेगुलेट मेटाबोलिज्म and it has caught the imagination of all sections of the society including the celebrities media and persons layman persons across the globe however the matter is very controversial some authorities believe it to be just a fad while others feel that this is a great means to combat the growing menace of non communicable disease as far as the references are concerned you look up the internet you will find thousands and thousands of references anecdotes theories hypotheses but as far as the concrete evidence is concerned rodent studies are available which points to good clinical and biochemical improvement with intermittent fasting but human reports are sparse now at the outset let me make it very very clear that this is not a type of diet this is the pattern of eating this is not what we eat but when we eat and do modifications have been suggested this is in fact the cycle between eating and fasting and non calorie drinks may be used however during the fasting period we know that this concept of intermittent fasting is coming from the ancient times hindu muslims other religions they have uh, got their own way of religious fasting but in the recent years the several intermittent fasting variants have come up including intermittent energy restriction or time restricted feeding as an alternative dietary strategy for the weight management and improving metabolic levels particularly fat different regimens have been suggested but the most popular one is 16 is to 8 method when the fasting window is for 16 hours and eating window is for 8 hours then there is 5 is to 2 diet on 5 days of the week you can enjoy your usual normal meal and on the rest two days the calorie restriction coming to 20 to 25% of uh, the total calories which we usually consume on other days uh, can be taken eat stop eat diet is 24% uh, 24 hour uh, fast one day and 24 hour uh, 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 the eat stop eat diet is 24 hours fast once or twice a week then there is varier diet whatever calorie we are consuming we can consume in a single meal or a 4 hour eating window the factors which have been hypothesized to improve the metabolic needs is through the good effect on the circadian biology the gut microbiome and modifiable lifestyle behaviors whenever the this normal biological and physiological pattern is disturbed it can result in a negative metabolic milieu giving rise to a lot of communicable non communicable diseases like obesity diabetes cardiovascular disease and cancer circadian this is the graph which shows the effect of intermittent fasting on the metabolic regulation and how it can decrease the incidence of obesity type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease and cancer circadian biology we know by now that all physiological processes are best performed at particular time of the day in mammals the suprachiasmatic nucleus of hypothalamus is the master biological clock and it is entrained to light and dark stimuli now desynchronization of this master clock will result in the risk of increased chronic uh, diseases and peripheral uh, circadian clocks also exist in liver fat and skeletal muscle we know by now this slide is quite familiar to the scientific world how the behavior hormone physiology metabolism and energetics are the result of uh, can be uh, influenced by circadian regulation there are certain metabolic functions which are better during wake period or the feeding period like glycogen cholesterol and bile acid synthesis insulin secretion lipogenesis adiponectin production and glycolytic metabolism happening in muscle 
During the sleep or fasting period, gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, mitochondrial biogenesis, glucagon secretion, lipid catabolism, leptin secretion, and oxidative metabolism in muscle dominate. So the timing of food intake is very important uh, determination of uh, human health and disease risk. It is hypothesized that the fasting regimens which match the circadian rhythm results in the improved oscillation in circadian clock gene expression and reprogramming of the molecular mechanism of uh, energy metabolism and it results in body weight regulation properly. Now increased sensitivity decreases during the day and into the night and on top of that there is increased secretion of growth hormone during night that contributes to insulin resistance being maximum during the late evening. So uh, meals consumed at night are associated with greater postprandial glucose and, and it results in the increased incidence of type 2 diabetes mellitus. We know by now that gastrointestinal flora microbiota are important determination. They are the important determinants of the metabolism of the body and this gut flora is influenced positively by intermittent fasting. Fasting regimens have the potential to impact modifiable health behaviors. A study in eight overweight young adults showed that increasing the nightly fasting duration during the night if the fasting duration is increased beyond 14 hours it results in statistically significant decreases in energy intake and weight as well as improvements in self-reported sleep satisfaction and satiety. And modifiable life behaviors can affect energy intake, energy expenditure and sleep. Naturally, when the eating window is reduced to 8 hours, the total calorie intake will be less. However, very important and interesting finding is that even a one-day fast or 75% calorie restriction was shown to reduce calorie intake by approximately 30% during the subsequent three days. And it results in a statistically significant weight reduction in 73% of the trials which has been conducted on intermittent fasting. Energy expenditure, well, animal studies, particularly rodent studies have shown that the circadian clock, if it is properly maintained, it regulates locomotion and improved muscle coordination. However, the human data are sparse. Night time eating is associated with reduced sleep duration and poor sleep quality, which can lead to insulin resistance and increased risk of obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease and cancer. Specifically, eating meals at abnormal times, that is late at night, is hypothesized to cause the desynchronization of the biological clock and subsequent disruption of everything, normal sleep pattern. But if you can match the food with the circadian rhythm that can reduce the risk of cardiometabolic disease and cancer. Possible benefits of in intermittent fasting are quite a lot. It can increase energy level, promotes cellular repair and autophagy. And you know, for that, in 2016, Japanese biologist Osumi won a Nobel Prize. It reduces insulin resistance, protects against type 2 diabetes. There is loss of weight, particularly fat is lost, lowers bad cholesterol, promotes longevity and protects against neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It improves memory, boosts, renal, uh, uh, boosts brain function and it makes our cells more resilient. Well, pregnant ladies, the patients having heart problems and high blood pressure, children and adolescents, people having eating disorders and disordered eating patterns should not be allowed to uh, have intermittent fasting as their schedule. Now the million dollar question comes, can diabetes fast? Several studies have suggested that fasting may be helpful for the people with diabetes, but it is not a mainstream treatment. In fact, the American Diabetic Association right at the moment does not recommend fasting as a technique for diabetes management. The association says lifestyle changes including medical nutrition therapy, more physical activity are the cornerstones for weight loss and good diabetes control. Friends, however, recently the huge success of very low calorie diet and bariatric surgery 
in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus has suggested and sometimes they have resulted in reversal of the diabetes. So that is to suggest that the solution to this complex disease type 2 diabetes mellitus lies in diet and lifestyle rather than drugs and we should aim at insulin resistance rather than blood glucose. Intermittent insulin resistance is the most prominent feature of type 2 diabetes has long been known to improve with calorie restriction. After a period of fasting, the insulin sensitivity rises, insulin levels fall and weight loss occurs, fat is lost more as compared to the traditional methods. That reduces, in, lowering of the insulin resistance means lowering of the inflammatory state, promoting cellular autophagy and decreased vascular dysfunction and therefore it, all these can be expected to improve cardiovascular risk and mortality. Now, this is a, uh, a small case reports reported in BMJ, the therapeutic use of intermittent fasting for people with type 2 diabetes mellitus who were previously on insulin. It was found that the therapeutic fasting was able to reverse their insulin resistance, resulting in cessation of insulin therapy while maintaining proper control of blood sugar. The patient was able to lose significant amount of body weight, reduce their waist circumstances and their uh, glycated hemoglobin level. So the key learning points from these cases are that therapeutic fasting regimens can help reverse type 2 diabetes mellitus and minimize the use of pharmacological intervention. And it is also an underutilized means to control the blood sugar. Fasting is a practical dietic, dietary strategy. With proper education and support, we have found compliances to be good. Then there was another study, the effect of one-week fasting therapy in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus and metabolic syndrome. A randomized control explorative study was done. The results of the pilot study showed the beneficial metabolic effects of one-week fasting therapy in patients with type 2 diabetes over four months. Larger control trials However, with longer observation period, should test the clinical efficacy of fasting program in diabetes. So, friends, patients with diabetes who are interested in intermittent fasting can be encouraged to engage in fasting, but with proper guidance from healthcare practitioners. And a specific attention should be paid to the medicine adjustment, glucose monitoring, and fluid intake. Unless the Persons who do intermittent fasting drink additional fluids. They are actually reducing their total fluid intake due to reduced intake of liquid foods. In this case, the risk of dehydration and hypotension increases. The patient may then need to reduce or withhold their diuretics, SGLT2 inhibitors or antihypertensive medications on the days of fasting. So the take-home summary is the benefits and risks of human remain largely unexplored. A few randomized trials have suggested the benefits of fasting are much more than the potential harms and diabetics can try intermittent fasting with utmost precaution and with proper medicine adjustment, self-monitoring of blood glucose levels, intermittent fasting can be encouraged and safely implemented among people with diabetes. Friends, old concepts change. Remember, there was a time once when we believed that earth was flat. It holds promises. Intermittent fasting holds promises for a good health. Good evidence-based studies, however, with open minds are welcome. And if we are able to substantiate the early reports, these encouraging reports, maybe tomorrow we'll be talking about intermittent fasting as a strong therapeutic weapon against the growing menace of the epidemic of non-communicable disease of obesity, cancer, and diabetes mellitus. Thank you.